that Dustin uh, and Ren are going through right now, which is stuff that Christians say. Um, and with an emphasis, maybe not just on what, what we say, but maybe why we say it, and uh, with the idea that we can, if we get a clear picture about why we say things, we can maybe have a clear picture, not not have a, a list of things to say, but a, a, a posture or a position. Just as a quick recap, we are talking about empathy, sympathy, and apathy last week. Those three things. Plant, you weren't here. So. Empathy is when you actually try to... And like feel what the other person's feeling and put yourself maybe more in their shoes and um, really even though you haven't been through it yourself maybe but to have those feelings that they may be experiencing a kind of way of being um and so we talked about a little bit why those three what situations those three things are helpful in i'm not trying to say good bad um but being able to work with our own experience and be able to let people step uh step towards us or or um be alone, but not be uh, taken over. Mm-hmm. And then we uh, we're also talking a little bit about the importance of uh, of finding meaning in things. New Testament verse. It's from hesitation. are those times when people just can't help themselves? How do you think we, the church in general, can respond to that? Instead of saying, you just need to, you know, buck up. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and the first words we were talking about, or whatever, just we're with you. And listen, that if someone listens and they're not telling you what to do, how you should feel, how you should do it, they're just listening. And uh, he, he works with the whole Wiccan witches community out there. There's actually a real Wiccan community. And he gets a lot of heat from his fellow pastors because he doesn't try to save them. He just listens to them. Mm-hmm. Well, he was out there one day and... Um, and people will learn. Um, I've taken in students who I had to do everything, but they learned. So one of the uh, positions, right? Yeah. Either we do... Uh, very little, um, and or we, we're very careful not to overdo, because we don't want people to become dependent, or we do do everything, right? And these are these in some ways we can think about these as um, uh, like like a thesis and antithesis, right? Like like um, two uh, competing ideas. Is it this or is it this? Bad thing too is that we need to be ever mindful that we should be relying. Anyway, I, I, I went to Chris and I said, I explained the situation to him, and, and I said, Chris, I don't know how to pray about it. So when you read, just take it to the bone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he, he's mm-hmm. always... Um, housing, all those kinds of things, very concrete, specific, and circumscribed uh, goods or services we can provide for people who aren't able to provide those for themselves. And... Maybe on the other side is being able to pray for people or just be there for people. Um, but it, I, I think we're also missing, I mean, I think about my mother, my grandma, uh, and, and her sister. They went and where you pray and your prayer will be answered. Okay. Well, now, if that's <laughs> the case, you tell me that all of these people who are un, uh, that are uh, uh, homeless and so forth have not, are not praying, you can't tell me that they're all atheists. Now, if there are some, yes. There's mm-hmm. atheists everywhere, but it would it, it seemed like well, a, a very difficult to to come to the fact that we have a lot of no there are no atheists in the foxhole right. Well, <laughs> <laughs> um. Well, in Matthew seven, because we forget as people, we always want God to say yes to our request. Okay. I don't. Care. 
the men were talking about today and kind of I wasn't articulating very clearly. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks will receive. And anyone who seeks will find. And the what kind of asking is that talking about? What kind of seeking is that talking about? <clears throat> and I think that's what we have to ask ourselves too when we pray. Is it that we're wanting answers or is that we want to be in community meeting? Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's right. being expressed here. And so um, the difference between healing and curing, mm -hmm. um, and that's something that we could, uh, as far as helping people, uh, that's uh, a little bit to tag on to what... Answer low. <coughs> she, she takes that as, as being healed. Symptom reduction or elimination, sometimes it doesn't. Exactly. Um, and what, what Ruth was talking about is this idea that symptom reduction or not, whether somebody stops using or doesn't... Yeah, stop. yeah. so <coughs> the statement... Go, uh, like 2,000 years ago, it was you're walking down the street, you see somebody in need, and you help them. Mm -hmm. The Good Samaritan, right? But I'm not sure that's still the answer today because now we have the option to uh, like find out. It's not just about like, okay, this one hungry person that I met on the street and I bought him breakfast. Can we find out how many hungry people are there? And the answer is yes, we can, right? And that's everybody. That's all the way to Africa. And so... This guy mentioned a few weeks ago, he said we should do more for the homeless, and that has been ringing in my ear since then. Last Wednesday, I was at the Wolf's place, and uh, Holly said something about human trafficking, the same thing. We should do something about it, and and then yesterday, the guy who taught uh, Dustin at the school, he said something about, like, I want Dustin to make me feel uncomfortable. And I think we should feel that about uh, the homeless and uh, the, the human trafficking situation in this city, like everybody who saw that Sunday at church. If you show up at church, that puts you in the top 1% of the spiritually awake people in the city because most people don't go to church. But despite that, we have to get uncomfortable and start like saying, okay, you know, we need to go out there and help. Mm -hmm. well, I, I think coming back to it. Do this. How does this work? <laughs> um, do we pray or do we do things? Um, or when we, and, when, do we, and when we provide physical, concrete, specific things, in what context do we do that? And part of what you're talking about, Clint, I think is... Kitchen with the mother, and she says, There's a phone on that refrigerator, <laughs> <laughs> and so obviously it had been put up there out of her way, yeah. you know? but she knew where it was. She, she does know where everything is, <laughs> um, yeah. And then the <laughs> church, but there's a, there's a church in the Oakhurst area that I took, took uh, the book on the grief, and, and some of the poems are just absolutely fantastic. And I would read some of them, and they'd say, well, I would like to have a copy of that. Could you make me a copy of the book and, and, and bring within it? Within this circle, even, within this room. Well, within so this circle, <clears throat> several years ago, as some of you know, uh, I had heart surgery. Mm -hmm. And I love 24-hour care. And you live alone. We're associated with it. I still can't believe that. Mm. <laughs> yeah. But everybody gladly step forward and you know being there there's you know several people slept all night with me mm, wow. <laughs> yeah. Presbyterian church in south los angeles and to be a deacon there was to be an usher the deacons here actually work and this is the first congregation my wife and i had and this is the first time this church uh where the deacons actually put forth a lot of effort and and so and I think what we're talking about here, communicating and so forth, is extremely important. I remember as a deacon, uh, I would say, and after a while I began to realize that what was really important was saying, well, how can we pray for you? Mm -hmm. And it's interesting, that one question mm -hmm. made a vast difference in a lot of people that wouldn't respond. Mm -hmm. So that the pastors at least know what's going on within the congregation. And I think this is another way. Uh, if we start pressing into what does it look like for us to take seriously our commitment to one another and not say boxes or say that now God won't lightning bolt me, um, but that this is, this is the work of, of Jesus. This is like his whole gig was going and working and praying and helping and sometimes not helping or doing all kinds of interesting things, making people very uncomfortable. Um, 
in ways that push them in. Uh, <laughs> I'm thinking this whole session <clears throat> about each other and a lot more courage can be involved than it could even for us, for both folks. I think that's what our churches always show up with a little love now and then. <laughs> but I would bow before you, Lord, and thank you for your gift. Thank you for you to grow in your life. And we have a birthday. Happy birthday.